This is how to get bond energy of selected bonds using heats of formation. Use the heats of formation and other bond energies to determine the average carbon-carbon bond energy in naphthalene, formula C10H8. As you can see, this is a conjugated structure here, so the bond order isn't exactly carbon-carbon um, double bonds and carbon-carbon single bonds. It's somewhere in between because there's resonance. Okay, the way to solve this is first to write the atomization reaction for naphthalene. So atomization, as it sounds, is taking a material in the gas phase and turning it into its component atoms in the gas phase. So this is our atomization reaction. Okay, next is to find the delta H of this reaction in the standard state. And we're going to take the heats of formation of our products minus the heats of formation of our reactants. So we will take 10 times the heat of formation of carbon gas plus 8 times the heat of formation of hydrogen gas minus 1 times the heat of formation of naphthalene in the gas phase. And so we have these values in the table. This would be equal to 10 times the heat of formation of carbon in the gas phase is 716.681 plus 8 the heat of formation of hydrogen in the gas phase is 217.97 minus the heat of formation of the naphthalene, which is 164.9. All of these are in kilojoules per mole. We will then solve for this. And it turns out that the value is 8745.67 per mole of reaction. Okay. Now there's another thing we can do with our atomization reaction. We can also find delta H of this reaction by taking bonds broke minus bonds formed. That's another way to get delta H. So what bonds do we have to break? Well, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 11 carbon, I'm going to draw a dotted line because we're not sure if they're single or double bonds, uh, carbon bonds. That's a bond I have to break if I'm going to atomize this material. And then there are 8 carbon-hydrogen bonds. Now, the number of bonds formed is zero because we made atoms okay all right well what we can do is take this value which we found from heats of formation and set it equal to bonds broke minus bonds formed so i will write that here 8745.67 is going to be equal to 11 carbon carbon bonds that we break plus 8 and this time I'll use the carbon-hydrogen bond energy of 413 kilojoules per mole to figure that out. And then minus zero. All right, well, if I can just do the math, I can figure out that if I bring this to the other side, this is 5,441.67 is equal to the energy for breaking 11 carbon-carbon bonds and I will divide that and it turns out that 494.7 kilojoules is what's required to break a carbon-carbon bond in naphthalene and since bond um, enthalpies are usually just to the nearest integer they're just estimates I will just round that up to 495 kilojoules alright the next part of this question says how does the value compare to the average of a carbon-carbon single bond and a carbon-carbon double bond. 
Well, you can see it's sort of in between. If the bond order were exactly one and a half bonds, I could take 347 plus 612 and divide it by 2, and that would give me a value of 480 kilojoules per mole. So this would be if the bond order was exactly equal to 3 halves. But it's not. It looks like it's a little bit of a stronger bond because we get stabilization from resonance structures. So our value came out for naphthalene to be 495 kilojoules. Okay, that's how you get a bond energy that's a little bit tricky from atomization reaction and heat of formation.